Auto Line at CES is brought to you by Borg Warner, ETOS, and by Gentex. So as Oshkosh Corporation, we serve our firefighters with our, with our, with our iconic firefighting vehicles. That is the fuse and recycling collection vehicle that you see the blue one out there, right? A garbage truck. <laughs> That most of us would call it that. Okay, okay. but a, a refuse truck, truck yes. <laughs> did you know that it's the seventh hardest job in the United States? The refuse collection job is very difficult. They go up and down the stairs, up and down the vehicles, right, every time. And they have to look around and how they actually move and how they drive. And it's, it's a very, very difficult job. I've tried it. It's not that easy to do, right? He, even here, we, and then I'll show you a vision of the AI. Uh, we are applying AI, electrification, connected solutions here to create what I call as a moments of autonomy, to make it easier for them to do their jobs, right? Make it more productive, make those positions more attractive. They can attract people who want to be, you know, garbage collector uh, jobs, make it more attractive. So that is the vision of it. And then there's full electrification. This fire truck that you see is fully electrified fire truck. Oh my gosh. And um, the beauty- Because they don't go very far, right? They don't go very far. So, so you don't need super long range on a fire truck. You don't need super long range, but also you need to make sure that you can serve the daily mission of being able to pump electrically, right? And we do have an engine as a backup in case if it's needed. Um, most important thing here is you want to make sure that you're not completely changing the operations of the fire, fi the fire truck. Mm -hmm. It, all of the positions of all these controls and valves, everything that you see here, so it has to be exactly what they're used to. Because the fire, because the fire stations are, are trained with the existing fire trucks. If you completely change this, they're going to have a very hard time in an emergency how to go about work on this. So we made sure we retained all the operational benefits, but this is fully electric. This is actually in production today and it is being deployed, it's being actively used by our customers. We deploy technology early stage with our customers and make sure that they run it and test it and you know, uh, and then we get the feedback there. Additionally, what you see here is um, one of the most difficult jobs for fire trucks that they have is when they actually go and deal with the fire scene. Do you know it's also dangerous when they actually park the vehicles and they're standing behind the vehicles. There are a lot of accidents out there because oncoming traffic they have a big risk with the oncoming traffic on the side of the highway when they're standing and dealing with it, right? So here we are uh, uh, flying a frac mirror technology called you know, collision avoidance systems where um, with, with sensors and AI, the system actually looks at the trajectory of the oncoming traffic and tells them, gives them a two, two to three second warning saying something is coming so that they can get out of the way. We took this technology from Pratt Miller from the racing racing side and applying it applying it to here. So this is an example of a collision avoidance system uh, that that has been a part of, and, and this system can go across any of the emergency vehicles uh, application. We're showing this on the fire truck right now. And, and this came out of your racing program. I'll oh, show you that. the racing. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because on, in the race on the race track, they want to make sure that. You know, there's multiple class of vehicles that race on the same racetrack. They need to know if it's going to be, if they want to, you know, go after the what's coming behind and let them go. Right? That's right. There, there could be a faster car behind in behind, a different but category. They, they want to let it go because it's a different class. Right. They make split second decisions when they're on the racetrack. There's so much technology from the racing that we can apply to the commercial side. And this is one, sim one simple example of it. That's brilliant. Here is another, I'm really, really proud of this. We are launching this. We launched this vehicle here today at CES. This is a fully electric um, front loader uh, vehicle. Right? It is not just about electrification. It has all of the modern safety technologies like 360 cameras and collision avoidance systems, cross traffic alert, everything that you really see in your passenger cars, it's all in this vehicle. Most importantly, it's fully custom designed. If you come here, Oh, so a fairly so a easy fully, step in. Absolutely, this is fully custom design ergonomics because people get in and out of the vehicle so many times a day, something about three to 4,000 times a day they get in and out of the vehicle. 
making this, it's their office. They work on this vehicle probably six days a week, 10 hours a day, right? Making this uh, as ergonomically, it's a fully custom design all from the ground up. Visibility, it's designed for a 95th percentile male and a female, right? Designed for all of that. So it's a fully purpose-built design vehicle that's electric, has all the safety features, and we are launching this today at CES. Fantastic. We already have a side loader. This is the side loader are the ones that where the arm comes to the side. Have you seen those at home? When it comes to your neighborhood, you see the refuse trucks that come in and the arm comes to the side and grabs the can. This is a front loader. This is used for commercial. Uh, we've, we've got both for, versions. For dumpsters. For dumpsters, there you go. Yes. So we've, we've got both versions of it. Yeah. So I, this is the one I want to show you. This is a really exciting. By the way, this is patented design of our own propulsion system. You see the, you see there the, you know, the, the transmission system is completely designed by Oshkosh. It's our patented technology. So we go much deeper in the, you know, the overall vehicle design. It isn't just about. You You're know, not just buying a bunch of parts bunch and, of putting and putting them together. Them together. Yeah. <laughs> right. So this is. This is all about how AI and electrification comes together in the refuse collection uh, area. I'm going to have some of my experts here explain it. You have? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. This is Dr. Brendan Chen. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Brendan. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so here we're demonstrating a couple of technologies. We have fully electrified um, side loading arm for reference connection. This is a fully electric arm. This is uh, going to be really, really fast in terms of how quickly it comes and grabs and and, and actually deploys it. Are, are you showing this in a editor? Can you activate this? Absolutely. Yeah, we can. Okay. Yes. He's going to show you. Just before we activate this, I have to show you. So we have here, you know, you have a refuse can detection. You can see that the object is pretty, um, like, it's detected as costless, right? The refuse can, okay, all the pedestrians around it. Now, if we were to move this can here. It identifies that it knows a can. Yeah. And you try to hit the button there, it says not ready, right? So if I hit it, it says not ready. It's not ready. But once the bin is in place, which, there you go. And if we hit the button. Go for it. Go for it. Now, question. Yes. Do I have to position my, my waste basket, my, my garbage can perfectly, or will it be able now, to figure out wherever I put it? Out. There are sensors around it, so basically, you can see that we're calculating the distance here, right, through the artificial intelligence, the cameras, and LIDAR. But, but when it said not ready, what was it reading? It's because what happened was basically, um, you, you have to have it at the edge of the road, right? So, if, for example, if you are, if you have a mailbox or something else, it's, then it's not going to be ready, right? So you don't want it to pick up mailboxes, but you want it to pick up refuse bins. Got it. Okay. So it, it knows it's a refuse collection container versus a mailbox or a child or a bicycle or something else. It won't deploy if any of those things are there. Yeah. It knows and it locates exactly where the refuse container box is, and then deploys the arm with a push of a button without no joystick, nothing. The speed in which this one does it is several seconds faster than what you could do today with our conventional joystick. That was pretty quick. Yeah. Huge, right. a huge amount of savings, right? Okay. Think. And so if you think about the typical refuse collection route has about 1,000 to 1,200 houses a day, you're saving about 45 minutes to the hour of that shift, right? So if you add that 45 minutes up to the entire year, that's a lot of hours. Sure is. Real good. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and then the last technology here is yes. that I want to just want to show you. Typically, when you have a recycle versus refuse, people cross contaminate. People throw refuse into recycling. What's wrong with it? The problem is it costs money to sort it out. It's a safety issue. If you put if you put things that should not be in the refuse, it, if it goes in there. It could be safety issue as well. So our customers want us to be able to identify what is in the refuse work stream. This is using AI technology to, to see what is in there. And what do you do with information? They can educate their, their customers and saying, hey, you mix things together, or they can do a much better job of sorting it out. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits of having this technology of 
knowing what is in, is there a cross contamination between your refuse and your recycle. So that is what this, this is going to be on the, this is a part of a refuse collection truck that you don't see, mm -hmm. but you can, it'll be, it'll be on the vehicle itself. So the drivers get a notification of what is in the in the waste stream that they put into it. Okay. It's, it's very, I'm really excited about this technology. It's That's a great. lot of potential there. That's terrific. Um, <laughs> clearly, you have seen our. Uh, let me show you. Uh, very proud of we're, the USPS. We're very uh, familiar. We've done a lot of reporting on uh, okay. the new postal truck. Okay. So you have you been inside of looked into inside of one? Uh, no, I have not. Jeff, hi. This is Jan McElroy, automotive. Uh, uh, out of line. Out of line. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Jeff is the head of the program for a refuse. I wanted to. Sh uh, wanted to. Can we show open you. the door and see what it's like inside? Uh, it's a little better view from the back. Oh, let's do. Okay. Cool. And we do see the back and all the de the cargo area that's back there. So, John, this is also purpose design, fully from the ground up design, right? Uh, allows the mail carriers to go in and out of the mail bar, this thing. A lot of package carrying capability, uh, safety features in terms of 360 camera, cross traffic alert, uh, pedestrian war warning, all of those things that you see in a modern auto automotive. Um, electric and gas both, both versions of it. Uh, we are in production today and um, we are building them in our brand new plant in South Carolina. And uh, you know we're super excited to be a part on this program. Real good, thank you. So any comments on uh, the mail carrier's response to this? We've gotten really good feedback from the mail carriers. They, they've uh, started using the vehicles, they're driving them, and they love all the different features that they have. Um, and the fact that it's really built around the carrier and what the carrier needs to be able to get their job done and get it done safe later. Real good. And um, with a lot of technology to show, this is a, our vision of the future. This is, this is not in production today, vision of the future. Think of it as a um, Uber for your refuse collection. So with, on your app, you can hail a cab. You can hail the, we call a hairy, hailable refuse. It can come to your house and you can, you know, dump your garbage. That way you, you, can, you can have the garbage coming fully autonomous. Um, let me show you. And it, it measures it, it weighs, it weighs how much you put in there and it takes it to a central area for it to be, to be deployed. Okay, that's, so that's a vision of the future of, you know, you don't make garbage on a regular basis, right? You don't need to have every week somebody coming into your house. You can actually on demand, you know, come in and that. It's a really good application for small campuses and things like that where you have, you know, you can just very, very quickly, you know, use, make the garbage and have it be removed very, very quickly. You don't have to save it.